So that's in the circuit. So uh, we'll now do the analysis of uh, that simple uh, series circuit. We'll go back to measure the voltage across um, test points two and three. And we can see that we have zero volts there. Um, so that's giving me an indication that there's something now wrong with that circuit. And um, being having zero volts there, that means I'm not having any current flow uh, in the circuit at all. So there, I've got an open that I'm going to be looking for. And uh, across uh, R2, I measure zero volts. And then we'll measure across R3. And uh, we've got 12.3 volts, which equals the voltage that we've got applied from the power supply. So um, my open circuit has to be R3. So to clear uh, the trouble, uh, we'll go ahead and just do um, shift clear. And now all of the um, troubles are removed and our system's back into the default settings. Notice that doing that, the DC power was removed from this particular module and the 12 volt supply has been shut down as well. It's that easy to go through this manual mode on these things. So uh, it's real easy to have the student calculate uh, the voltages that should be present on any one of the circuits. And then you can go ahead and um, insert the, uh, the trouble. Um, I'm going to turn the 12 volt supply back on and I'm going to apply it back to um, my uh, module one and we're back to our normal operations here. Notice what happens though, I've got these uh, switches um, S1, S2 and S3 on the, uh, the board and I can have them in or out of the circuit and I can get different uh, readings. Um, so as I go back and forth across the, uh, the system, I can see that I'm going to end up with a point where I'm going to actually measure uh, my full voltage again. And that's going to be the indication that there's an open in the circuit board between uh, R2 and R3. So uh, even though I didn't move this up, you can see that it's, it's really that way. So this is kind of a, a neat little uh, troubleshooting aid in a way you can measure the voltage across the components and you see that uh, it's all zeros. Okay, so that's telling me that there's something besides um, one of the resistors that is open. So I can now go between uh, resistor end and resistor end until I measure the voltage from the power source and that's telling me uh, the break has got to be between those two points. So hopefully this was helpful for you on uh, getting you excited about using this. Uh, the nice thing about the, the NIDA trainer is that we can insert the troubles into uh, the circuit very easily and it's, it's going to give them um, a, a real feel for uh, troubleshooting other than um, you know, having a, a wrong value part put in. Let's take a look how we can measure uh, resistance uh, on this particular board. That also comes in handy with these switches so we can open the circuit so there's no voltage or current going through. Uh, we can make uh, ohmmeter measurements. Um, we can also just make sure that the DC to that particular board that you're going to be working with is removed. Right? So it's deactivated so I don't have to worry about anything happening on the board. Now I can move my meter over to the ohms function and we'll come in and we'll actually measure the resistance of, of those three resistors that we've been working with for this experiment. So we'll go across R1, and R1 uh, is color-coded 2K ohms. You can see that we've got 1.954 ohms. And we'll come across R2, and uh, it's color-coded 1,000, and we get 985 ohms. And then across R3, uh, we get 985 ohms as well. So you can see that with the trainer, we're not just stuck measuring just voltages or currents. Uh, we can actually uh, set it up to measure resistance by removing the power. This is, you can still measure resistances with the troubles inserted into the system. 
The only thing you need to do is to make sure that you have your power deactivated to uh, measure that resistance value. And to, to measure the current, we can uh, just use the switches to open the circuit so that we can insert our meter in series with the circuit. I'll change the meter from ohms to milliamps. Okay, and I'll go ahead and resupply power now to that circuit. So I should be measuring the current flowing uh, in that series string. And uh, again, with uh, basically 4K ohms at 12 volts, we should have about 3 milliamps, and you can see that we have the 3.13 milliamps. So it makes it really easy for the student to uh, make uh, current measurements. If we uh, were in a real live circuit board, we'd have to be unsoldering a component and um, connecting our meter in series with that component so that we could actually measure the current. Uh, so by just opening the switch, we're able to do that. You'll find that most of the United cards are set up to, to uh, make easy measurements with. I think that does the uh, uh, overview of the manual operation of the trainer, and, and hopefully you can see that it really works well with the PDF lesson. Uh, there's a lot of material in the PDF lesson for the student to uh, study from, and uh, I think that you will uh, see that they really enjoy themselves. They really love the troubleshooting aspects. Let's take a look at the CAI uh, interface uh, using the trainer. Um, this way, the student doesn't have to punch any uh, of the keyboard's uh, controls. You won't have to insert troubles. It's all done through the uh, program itself. So uh, log into your student portal on your ILE, and um, you should end up with a page that looks similar to this. Uh, obviously, your uh, course courses will be different than what's listed in this particular image, but uh, right now let's just go to the basic electronics because we're going to uh, still use the same um, troubleshooting experiment as before. Uh, all you have to do is just click the radio button and in a few seconds you will see then um, the menu available for that particular lesson. So we're going to be doing direct current, so I'll just open the uh, folder on that and we'll come down to basic DC circuits, and then we'll go into that troubleshooting experiment, just like we did uh, using the uh, PDFs. So I'll just click on that, and we'll go through our little logon, and it takes a few seconds for that to go through. I'm gonna just see if I can resize this just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go directly to the menu. I'm not going to go through the uh, pre-lesson stuff. Notice that on this particular lesson, um, it's designed for uh, open components, shorted components, changed value components, and you've got your final exam, and then you can actually exit the lesson. The thing that you really need to remember is that you can't just click on the X up here. You have to exit out of the lesson, otherwise you'll get uh, timed out, or you'll have to wait for the timeout to get access back into the units. So we'll uh, go ahead and we'll do the open component. And we'll click on experiment to start it off. Uh, the first page is going to tell you the items that, we, that you need. In this case, it's the same as what we had before. It's that 6A card that's required. Um, it's going to go through some uh, brief explanation of what an open is. And um, it's going to show the card that we need to use. We're only going to be using this first uh, series string. Um, there's a 2K resistor, uh, 1K, and a 1K for a total of 4K ohms uh, being um, used off that board. Notice the switches, just like before. Uh, we need to set those exactly like we would be um, for the uh, PDF version. Um, again, this is just a schematic of what's there. And it's telling us that uh, we need to uh, set S1, S2, and S3 uh, into the uh, in uh, position. Uh, it says S4 and S5 should be in the out position. So. You want to make sure that you have um, those 
uh, switch settings set, and it's exactly the same as in the PDF. Um, brief um, explanation of the troubleshooting uh, four-step process that uh, is stressed, and this is both in um, the PDF as well as uh, the online version. I'll make sure you follow those steps. It really makes uh, the troubleshooting a lot easier. Um, at this particular screen, what they're asking you to do is if, um, if you've got three milliamps that's being applied, uh, to determine what you're going to have for voltage that's here. And, you know, if you do the arithmetic, you've got 4K with uh, 12 volts being applied, even though that's zero there, it should be 12. Um, you'll have three milliamps of current flowing in the circuit. And using Ohm's law, you can calculate what the voltage would be. So the 2K ohm resistor should have six volts applied which is correct. Um, the R2 uh, is a 1K and it should be 3 volts if you do the uh, arithmetic. And the same thing for R3 because it's a, a 1K resistor as well. So just click on the 3 volts and that was a correct response. The nice thing about this particular window is that it's having you look at the voltage uh, being used by each of those resistors and the amount of voltage that's being applied by the power source. So if we uh, follow Kirchhoff's voltage law or conservation of energy that uh, uh, whatever uh, is being used that we have to supply or whatever we supply has to be used uh, is a, a great troubleshooting technique and uh, an easy way for uh, determining uh, or help determining some of the circuit parameters. Uh, very important uh, concepts on that. We need to uh, now uh, set the initial controls onto the trainer and so that we can get the communication link between the computer and the uh, NIDA trainer. Uh, and what this really means is that you know, we need to turn the power switch on. That's really what it's saying. And, and, uh, but they use the uh, initial control settings. So uh, let me lean in here and I'm going to turn the power on. And we'll uh, take a couple of seconds and you'll hear the little uh, chirp saying that we've uh, made some basic communications now between uh, the trainer and the laptop. So I'll click the the next, or into the next slide. So there, this slide is telling us that we need to put the 6A card into the trainer, but you know we did that with the PDF version, so it's still in the trainer. So I'll just go to the next slide. And now it's telling us that we need to uh, turn on the 12 volt power supply. And like on the PDF version, we had to go over and, and manually move the arrow keys to actually access that 12 volt supply. But on this one, all I have to do is press the inner key on the keyboard and um, you will see that the, uh, the indicator light by the plus 12 volts will turn on. 